You are listening to the PRO Media Network, the next level in entertainment. and the Thun's losses with stats, facts, and breakdowns. And of course, interviews from Coach L. Gentry, team star Anthony Davis, and Drew Holiday as he chime in. And of course, before we get started, I'd like to give you, the supporters, and people who donate and buy from the poshlifestyle.com, which is our sponsor, and help the show out. So much love to all you people as we continue on our third year doing uh, the Sports Coma and other podcasts from the PRO Media Network. Thank you very much. And let's get into it, into the rundown. Now, of course, like I said, we'll be recapping two games with stats, facts, and breakdowns, interviews, and we also go into our topics on what happened as the Pelicans mount a four straight losing streak. Now, if you've been listening to the Pelican post game report, you guys been pretty much understanding exactly how myself has been feeling about what's been happening with this team. And it is absolutely uh, pretty bad, you know, to say the least. You picked the worst time of the year go on a four game slide and basically they sit now in the eighth position which is a position nobody wants to be in because of course that matches you up in the first round of the playoffs with the Houston Rockets nobody wants to be in that predicament Pelicans now are in that predicament listen to uh and also what compounded is the fact that Denver won last night as well so what happens is now that Denver has won Denver is now in the position where they are one game behind the Pelicans in the eighth, the ninth position, which is just outside of the playoff window. But a loss would ultimately end up moving the Pelicans into a position, a situation where if they keep losing like this, this could spell doom for the team's playoff hopes. But anyway, we'll get into that during the game. We'll also uh, break down some of the topics going around the team as well as uh, the, the losses and what we think ha- uh, kind of happened with the Cleveland loss. What we think happened with the OKC loss. What we think happened with other things that was going on in the game. We'll break that down as well. We also will go into uh, play the interviews for you. And uh, after we break down our topics, we'll also come into uh, the the loss of the upcoming game that we'll have uh, with the Memphis Grizzlies. We'll break that down in the second segment of the show. Now, moving forward, let's get into the rest of the rest of the details and move forward as we go into the situation dealing with the team. Now, of course, the Pelicans lost the game against the uh, Cleveland Cavaliers. We'll do that one first. Uh, 107 to 102 uh, behind LeBron James. And of course, LeBron James came into this game and LeBron James did what he usually would do against most teams. Of course, the Pelicans did beat this team early on. Didn't happen that well. It didn't. The Pelican, the Cavaliers basically remembered it and came back around and it didn't work. 107 to 102 was the ultimate end cap. That was uh, what happened. Now, LeBron James did accomplish a few things in his game outside of getting his customary big time play uh, where he almost had a triple double. He finished with 27 points, 11 rebounds and nine, excuse me, 11 assists and nine rebounds in the game. Almost a triple double from LeBron. But that wasn't it. Almost getting he had that double double, almost a triple double. But he also bypassed 
uh, Ma- Michael Jordan, MJ's uh, streak of 180, uh, 866 games. LeBron bypassed them 867 games, breaking that record as he continued to encroach upon a lot of the records set by Michael Jordan and the greats in the game as he gets a little closer toward the back end of his career. So LeBron put up big numbers for the Cavaliers. You know, LeBron James type numbers, but also he got help from Jordan Clarkson, who played well, 223 points off the, the bench, 16 from Rodney Hood, who usually kills the Pelicans no matter what jersey he's in. But anyway, before we get into the rest of the details of this particular affair, let's listen to what Coach L. Gentry, what kind of excuses he had after this one. His um, I think it start with the turnovers, you know. Uh, I think it's hard to beat any team with, uh, you know, we, we said 21 turnovers, but you know, we had it down as 24, uh, the way we keep turnovers. And uh, uh, I think if you if you have that many turnovers against a quality team, then obviously you're going you're gonna to struggle to beat a team, especially that, that's that good. And so, you know, our, our problem was is that we turned it over, and I think it's the type of turnovers that we had also. You know, they were just, uh, they were, you know, really turnovers that, uh, uh, after we've had a great play, uh, we've had a great possession. Uh, we turn it over right there. They're very, they were deflating turnovers, if anything. So, uh, you know, once again, uh, our half court defense has been really good. You look at it, you know, there's a team that's really good that, that shot 42% against us. Uh, we got to do a better job. You know, Adams is a great offensive rebounder. He's got seven of them. So, so for the most part, you know, to give up seven to the rest of the team, it's not bad. We got to do a little bit better job on him. But, but you know, if you ask me, the the, the difference in the game is the, is, is the turnovers. Coach, the losing streak is now four. What does this team need more than anything else right now? Well, I think we got to play. I think we got to play a little more loose. You know, I think we're playing a little bit tight, and I think that's because, I mean, I think that's the reason that we've turned it over a little bit. So we just got to get back with playing, uh, enjoying the game, and understanding that, you know, we got to embrace the situation right here. We got to embrace it, and we got to go out and play that we're capable of playing. You know, I think we've been really good defensively, even in the games that you know we hadn't been able to win. Uh, but offensively, we got to get our mojo back, and we got to uh, get to the point where we're feeling good about ourselves and moving the basketball and and uh, uh, completing plays. We're having too many possessions right now where it's uh, no pass, one pass. And what we've done is that we've always been a team that has been in the upper echelon of the league as far as passes per game and passes per possession. And I think we've got to get back to that. Coach L. Gentry, man, breaking it down, telling you we just didn't make enough plays at the end of the game. And that's absolutely true. Not enough plays, not enough uh, defense, allowing LeBron to get going, Jordan Clarkson, all these other guys. And I keep saying the same thing about the Pelicans. When they get down to it, it's not just the offense. It's the fact that the defense suffers at times. They allow teams to walk up layups, uh, tr- bad transition defense from one side to the other. Now, I'll count it. In every game, the Pelicans allow at least 10 wide-open three-point shots from their opponents. At least th- at least 10 of them that I, con- that I consistently count every night the Pelicans allow 10 wide-open three-point shots from the opposition, at least 10 of them. Now, I'm saying – that order for you to progress in the league. Offense is just one of the things, which is L. Gentry's. Obviously, he's not known to be a defensive guy, and that's what's killing this team. Let's get at least five more stops a game could spell a lot more winning for this team. But anyway, let's get into uh, the the uh, game information. LeBron James finished one rebound shot at triple-double. He set the all-time NBA record for consecutive games, scoring in double figures with 867, as I mentioned. Holding a 32-31 to lead with 10 minutes remaining in the second quarter, New Orleans then went on a 14-4 to run to take a 46-35 lead with 5 minutes and 12 seconds remaining in the first half. Then trailing by 71-58 with 7 minutes remaining in the third quarter, Cleveland closed the time frame, scoring 22-8. to to take a one-point lead to the final game, a frame. Then with the game tied at 82 with 10 minutes remaining in regulation, Cleveland went on a 15-8 run to take a 97-90 lead with five minutes and 33 seconds remaining. New Orleans did not get any closer than three points through the remainder of the game 
and they ultimately end up losing this game 107 to 102. Drew Holiday was the top scorer with 25 points. Andy Davis, man, played well b- below his potential. And he can't afford to have these kind of games. Now, I, don't, I rarely, if ever, criticize Anthony Davis. But this game was one of those games where he had to show up. He had to be uh, the AD that gets 25 or more a game. He has to be able to score over 25 uh, up in the high 20s, 27, 28, up that range every night from now on to the playoffs to give his team a serious chance to really get it. He didn't do it tonight, and he fell off tonight 16 points on 6 of 19 shooting from the field. He was 0 of 2 from downtown, had only 8 rebounds in 37 minutes. Now, we're going to play Anthony Davis in just a second. And I'm going to tell you exactly why. It was just outside of the Pelicans' transition defense. They actually controlled and did very well with the ball. He didn't turn the ball over. But it's just the fact that they have these mental farts, these brain lapses, these brain farts during during games where they don't where they'll check the same guy and leave a guy wide open. And it's like uh, it's this entire season, this team is basically two teams up until the the trade deadline that occurred when they moved out four or five guys and brought a bunch of new guys in that had to learn how to play with each other. Now, you know, it's now the time that the team has to sink in and play. Now, I just don't – I don't like a lot of L Gentry's defensive ro- – his uh, rotations off the bench. He doesn't consistently have a bench rotation of five guys that he can switch in off the bench that they can build a camaraderie by playing with each other. I just don't understand why he just can't keep a steady five. A pick a steady five guys off the bench – and keep those guys together in place. Every game, the game, he's switching them, and then they look different. They don't always play as well together, and it's just absolutely maddening to me. You're screwing up these lineups, and it's messing up how the team is playing down the stretch, and ultimately it's leading to these stupid losses where the teams can't get on the same page defensively, wide-open three-point shots, walk-up layups, and then when the referees get involved with it, that's another whole another thing involved into it too. So let's listen to what Andy Davis had to say after the loss. Let them get going. Joe Clarkson come down, uh, wide open three on the wing. Um, early in the game, we gave up multiple easy plays, uh, not getting back in transition, and um, LeBron made shots. So um, we kind of gave it away. What do you think of the bench tonight? One guy. All them guys play well. Uh, Ian, uh, Nico, especially Darius, uh, shot the ball extremely well tonight. Um, and they did a good job for us. He uh, was able to give us a chance to, to win the game. Do you think you were getting some shots in one of those ball points? Yeah, um, all the ones on target. Just, we missed a lot of shots tonight. Um, and we still had to give ourselves a chance to win at the end of the day. Uh, of course, I had to play better. Um, and if I do make, you know, half of those shots uh, that I missed, um, we probably wouldn't even be in that situation. So uh, you know, it's on me, but um, I think, you know, collectively as a team, we did a good job on both ends of the floor. How much do you look forward to this game? Sandy Davis, man, we gave it away. That was his words, and I agree with him. He, they gave it away. He could have been more aggressive. He could attack a little bit better than what he did. And sometimes you get those games where Anthony Davis kind of gets frustrated because of the calls. And and uh, and it, I don't know if he – I ain't going to say he shuts himself down, but it could be quite frustrating when you're getting beat up, you're getting held, and all this kind of stuff, and you can't get the calls. Now, the reason why I say that is because in this game, the referees showed a foul, stinking head again in this game and only allowed the Pelicans to go to the line six times the entire game most of the times it was for the pelicans finished the night 43 of 89 from the field that's 48 percent that's maybe a few percentage points better than what the Cavs did where you can round theirs off at 48 percent as well the pelicans did shoot one more three-pointer better than the, the cavaliers uh 11 of 26 versus the Cavs 10 of 24 which is 42 for the pelicans and 41.7 for the cavaliers Pelicans went to the line six times, converting five of six, while the key Cleveland Cavaliers went to the line 15 times, converting line uh, 11 of those shots. When you go down and look at the rebounds, they did. The, the Cavs did out-rebound the Pelicans by 10 with rebounds, 54 to 10. They lost that battle. The Pelicans out-assisted them 25 to 22. They kept the, the turnovers down to only 11 
which they had 15 points off of turnovers, where the Cavs had only 14 points off of turnovers. So they really kind of put things in perspective when they looked at it. So what's the underlying stat? They didn't shoot them out of the gym. The Pelicans had more threes. They had the same amount of, a, of basically of attempts and made, field goals made. So what's the difference? The difference in this game was the free throws. When you allow a team to shoot, uh, what? Nine more free throw attempts, and then they ultimately lose, win by five points. You got to look at the free throw. That's what I'm saying. The referees, consent, it, it's just ridiculous, man. You, they, 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 it's just ridiculous, man. You can't, the entire game, the way the Pelicans games operate, they get six attempts at the free throw line the entire game, and most of their game is hitting inside. It's just, it's just repugnant. Anyway, we'll finish up on the rest of this game on the other side of the break. We'll start on our other contest that the Pelicans took on OKC. Then we'll have a preview as they face off of Memphis. All that on the side of the break. You're listening to the Pelican Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network. Stay with us. Get all the latest news and updates from your New Orleans Pelicans at the Pelicans I View. The new and official Pelicans Daily Journal. Covering everything Pelicans. Attention everyone. Get, get breakdown on games, free agent signings, and potential moves. Unbiased opinions and straight up facts. With statistical analysis from Chief Balance. Go to www.thesportsdaily.com forward slash Pelicans dash I dash View. I'm a Saints and Pelicans fan, so the only podcast I can get my fix is The Sports Coma with Big Q. The guy's intense, funny, and they always keep it real. Check out The Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. What's up, sports world? It's Big Q from The Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. Talking to you about the website, theposhlifestyle.com. That's right, poshlifestyle.com. A great website where you can get great products at great prices. They sell organic herbs, vitamins, supplements, water filters for your home, EMF and cell phone radiation protection, healing magnetics, and healing crystals, personal protection devices like cell phones, stun guns, and mace spray, organic deodorants, shampoos, soaps, toothpaste, and more. They also sell 10A grade Brazilian hair. 10A music is available now. All kind of the latest down downloadable mixtapes. So what are you waiting for? Head on over to the poshlifestyle.com. That's the posh lifestyle, life spell with a Y, L Y F E style.com. Put in the sports coma for the 10% discount on your purchase. It's a win-win. So get your mind and body right with the posh lifestyle. Get ESPN or Fox. Get straight sports talk from the sports coma with Big Q and the guys. You're listening to the Pelicans Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network for all things Pelicans. For all things Pelicans, we are the Pelican Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network. That's a lot of P's, man. And uh, we're hoping for a lot of P's as in points for the Pelicans, but the Pelicans can't soon to get the point that if they don't get out of this losing streak, they're going to miss the playoffs. Another P. Golly, that's a lot of P's. But anyway, Let's finish off on this Cleveland Cavalier stinker, 107 to 102. Anthony Davis, 16 points in this game off of 16 of 9, 6 of 19 shooting, 16 points, 8 rebounds, and a couple blocks in the game through 37 minutes. Of course, that's well below what we know Anthony Davis could do, averaging 28.1 points a game, well below his average. If he can average what he averages or do a little bit better than his average, then the Pelicans will be above average, period. Also, did he get any help? Drew Holiday stepped up big time, 12 of 18 in this game, 25.6 rebounds. He had six turnovers in the game, but 25 points for Drew Holiday as the top guy. Off the bench, Nikolai Miritich broke out of that slump. He had 20 points and seven rebounds in 29 minutes off of eight of 13 shooting from the field. He was four of seven from downtown in the matchup. Then the other double-figure guy was Drew uh, Darius Miller, who had 11 points. He was three of four from downtown, four of seven from the field. He finished with 11 points and three rebounds in the game. A couple of seven-point turn turn ins from Solomon Hill who played 22 minutes in this game as he kind of come up on that minute restriction seven points from Hill 
and seven points from Ian Clark, seven from Rajon Rondo. And Rondo had seven points and eight assists in the matchup in 25 minutes of action. Etwan Moore, once again, did not show up. One of five shooting, one of two from downtown. He finished with three stinking lousy points in 29 minutes of action as he continues to struggle across the board. Up and down is Etwan Moore. But Anthony Davis was the main story in his loss to the Cleveland Cavaliers. Of course, you know, my take is, is, is Anthony Davis, if he would have played above his capabilities, as he said in the, in the the interview, that they gave this game away from Cleveland. They really needed this game. But, you know, he told you exactly what had happened. And the Pelicans at this point dropped the third straight game. And uh, what's up next? Well, let's cruise into the next matchup, which is basically we're going to look at the matchup with the Oklahoma City Thunder. The Pelicans lost that one. 109 to 104, which gave them their fourth straight loss in the time when you can't possibly lose this game. Now, of course, the series series was the season series was one two to one. They played three times this year. The final game, of course, was this loss to to OKC, and um, it's a lot to ask you to sweep OKC on a season. But you can't. You're you're in a position now where you don't want to be the seventh or the eighth seed in the playoff race. You just don't want to be that guy because number one, you'll be facing off against Houston, which is shown that the Pelicans uh, play well against Houston, but Houston's a better club. They just play better, bottom line. Uh, and you don't want to see Houston. You damn sure won't see Golden State. Even though Steph Curry might not be there, you still don't want to see Golden State. So your best chances is to finish uh, in between that four and seven range. I mean, four and six range, actually. You, you know, they might actually have a chance in that range, but you don't want to be the eighth, and you damn sure don't want to be the seventh. But anyway, let's get into this game against OKC. The Pelicans uh, turned in a pretty, uh, I don't know what to say. This game was kind of uh, up and down. A lot of missed opportunities in the game. The Pelicans, of course, finished the game as uh, shooting 46% on the field, 38 of 83. And the, the crazy part about it is that OKC had a, like almost 12, they had 12 more attempts, 95 attempts on 41 completions. And it was just a lot of uh, the Russell Westbrook, who was just excellent in this game. He put up another triple-double in this matchup, and he was tough to stop as the Pelicans just couldn't do anything with him. They shot 11, 30, 11 of 32 from downtown for 35%, while the OKC was 9 of 31. The Pelicans did get to the line this time around with the referees, 23 times converting 17 of those and finishing up at 74%, which is – you get to the line, and this is another thing with the Pelicans. Imagine if they would have hit a higher range on those three points, seven of 23. You know, that's just ridiculous. You left six points on the line. I know six points in a lot, but you lost. Look what you lost by, 109 to 104. You lost by five. So if you'd have been able to convert those free throws, you might have tied the game or basically won the game. But they were out-rebounded by OKC 61 to 51 including 14 offensive rebounds. That's totally repugnant and stupid and ridiculous. They did our system 28 to 24, but the turnovers is another thing. 21 stinking rotten turnovers from the, the Pelicans on this night that helped, that helped, helped them lose the game. They did have 16 fast break points versus 17, and they did beat the OKC Thunder in the paint 48 to 42. But the stinking, rotten, ugly turnovers, 21 stinking turnovers in a game. You cannot win games against quality opponents with stinking 20 turnovers. Here's Elvin Gentry to talk about this stinking, rotten 20 point, uh, 20 turnover um, game I think it's that ultimately with the led to you know, the Pelicans' um, fourth street. I think it's hard to beat. Any team with, uh, you know, we, we said 21 turnovers, but, you know, we had it down as 24, uh, the way we keep turnovers. And uh, uh, I think if you if you have that many turnovers against a quality team, then obviously you're going to you're going to struggle to be the team, especially that that's that good. And so, you know, our, our problem was is that we turned it over and I think it's the type of turnovers that we had also, you know, they were just uh, they were, you know, Really, turnovers that uh, uh, after we've had a great play, uh, we've had a great possession, uh, we turn it over right there. They're very, they were deflating turnovers, if anything. So, uh, you know, once again, uh, our half court defense has been really good. You look at it, you know, there's a team that's really good that, that shot 42% against us. Uh, we got to do a better job 
you know, Adams is a great offensive rebounder. He's got seven of them. So, so for the most part, you know, to give up seven to the rest of the team, it's not bad. We got to do a little bit better job on him. But, but you know, if you ask me, the 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 difference in the game is the, is, is the turnovers. Coach, the losing streak is now four. What does this team need more than anything else right now? Well, I think we got to play. I think we got to play a little more loose. You know, I think we're playing a little bit tight, and I think that's because. I mean, I think that's the reason that we've turned it over a little bit. So we just got to get back with playing, uh, enjoying the game, and understanding that you know we got to embrace the situation right here. We got to embrace it, and we got to go out and play that we're capable of playing. You know, I think we've been really good defensively, even in the games that you know we hadn't been able to win. Uh, but offensively, we got to get our mojo back, and we got to uh, get to the point where we're feeling good about ourselves and moving the basketball and and. Uh, a complete place. We're having too many possessions right now where it's uh, no pass, one pass. And what we've done is that we've always been a team that has been in the upper echelon of the league as far as passes per game and passes per possession. And I think we've got to get back to that. You see the guys need to loosen up. What do you think you have to do as a coach to make that happen? I just think, I, I just told them, you know, we just got to, to me, I think you got to embrace where we are and embrace the situation. You know, we're playing for a reason. You know, uh, the last five, six, seven games of the year, and there's been situations I've, I've, I've coached in this situation. I also coach where you're playing without any purpose at all, and that's really not that that good. So to be in a position where you plan for uh, uh, something, uh, I think you got to embrace it, but you got to play loose and know that I'm going to play. Coach L. Gentry breaking down the game, game, talking about turnovers with the defining factor in a game. Uh, he mentioned the stuff about Stephen uh, Hunter, of course, Stephen Adams, excuse me, which is the big center who plays. He finished with 14 points, 10 rebounds, and he had several offensive rebounds of his 10. And, of course, remember, the team had 14 offensive rebounds. The team is OKC. I'm speaking of seven of them coming from Adams, the big center. We have to do a better job on Adams, says uh, Mr. Elvin Gentry. But the reality of the situation is uh, Elvin Gentry, center, who's the Mecca Oka for, just played 13 minutes of action. And for the life of me, that is the only – true center that you have on the team everybody else are 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 forwards are forwards and guards the only true center on the team is Omeka Okafor he played 13 minutes in this game now I'm just saying Omeka Omeka Okafor is a world beater but you have to be able to play your center more than they start him for 13 minutes 15 minutes all this foolishness if this guy is known for his defense and rebounding, you got to give him an opportunity to play out there. I do not like the fact that Elvin Gentry continues to pull him out and don't play him beyond 13 to 15 minutes where they could use his defense. That's number one. Number two is about the turnovers, and he's saying about the defense is pretty good. Well, pretty much I understand where he's coming from, but me and him have different standards on what's pretty good as far as the defensive go. From what I see with the Pelicans defense, the Pelicans defense allow, you're talking about half court defense, the Pelicans allow people to get walk up layups. They allow guys wide open three pointers. What part of that defense you consider good is pretty good. You talk about holding them to 41%. When Russell Westbrook comes out, he gets a triple double, he gets triple, triple double against anybody. So you know that. But you can't allow his comrades like Paul George, who scored 27 points, got eight rebounds in the game, and then allow Carmelo Anthony 16 points and 16 rebounds in the game. You can't allow that. Then Steven Adams adds 14 and 10 along in there, and then you have 12 points off the game, off the, the bench from a guy like uh, Jeremy Grant. So, I mean, you can't you, – you, you're talking about what the team could do, what the team can't do. I just don't like the fact that you, you – these lineups he goes small too fast small too fast there's no reason for you to play small and match Anthony Davis up against Steven Adams that's a mismatch in my case because Steven Adams bullies him down in the paint that's making no it makes no sense for you to competitively keep going small and matching him up with Steven Adams in these games it's just stupid it's stupid it's dumb it's like when we played against Cleveland and he matched up Etwan Moore against LeBron James, and then had. I was like, "Are you kidding me? Are you are you simple? What's wrong with you? You don't you, Etwan Moore against LeBron James? Are you kidding me? You couldn't for one game slide DeAndre Liggins or Solomon Hill in at a matchup against him? Are you kidding me, Gentry? Are you kidding me? Are you trying to forfeit? Are you trying to give it up? Do you not? I mean, what the hell is the pro- you do not match Etwan Moore and say Etwan, I want you to guard LeBron James, and then we're gonna switch out and let Drew guard LeBron James, okay?" No, that's stupid. That's dumb. What 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 
part of the game is make does that make sense? What part of it does it make sense? It does not make any sense. And the same thing happened in this game. You have to match these guys. Each one more in the three guard rotation helps in certain games. When you have length like Paul George, you got to switch and put bigger guys out there. Put Solomon Hill out there if you don't trust, trust DeAndre Liggins. Put somebody else. I know Darius Miller is a terrible defender, but you know if DeAndre Liggins his, his the standpoint is defense. Plus he's six foot six. He would do better. He would do a better job on LeBron than Etwan Moore would. Besides, Etwan Moore is so up and down. He would benefit if you would put him on the bench and let him come off. At least he could start guarding guys his same size again. It's just stupid, man. Let's listen to what. Uh, let's go to uh, uh, excuse me, Anthony Davis, man. I'm all choked up here. Anthony Davis, what he has to say about the loss to uh, the OKC Thunder. Yeah, twenty plus. Yeah, time to give a. We have up 20 turnovers, so um, it's tough to win the game. Do you think it was just careless mistakes? Or what was it? it was careless. Um, a lot of them was unforced, um, and we can't afford to have turnovers. Mm-hmm. Did it feel like y'all yeah, were just maybe pressing a little bit, knowing you know how big these games are coming on the stretch? No. Um, I think we're trying to make the right plays, but um, I don't think we're thinking the game all the way through. Um, that's for everybody, um, including myself. You know, we got to... Make sure we just uh, go out there and just play. Uh, I don't want to say we're playing tight, but um, we are doing stuff that we normally don't do. Um, we just got to get back to how we're playing. And, and Coach talked about some of the mistakes with guys, like guys driving in when there wasn't any space, so just trying to make plays, you know, to just win, win so bad. Do you think that was part of the, the problem? No, I think I was just trying to be aggressive. Um, you know, that's, that's really it. Uh, you know, we're trying to be aggressive. We want to be aggressive. Um, but we got to know that, you know, when we do drive in there, it's, um, you know, guys are collapsing. Anthony yeah. Davis, man, talking about them pressing. We pressing, we pressing, trying to make things happen where things are not happening. And it shows a bit. And, you know, he disagreed with El Gentry on the tightness issue. It's just the fact that the team, it's a lot, man. Defense, a lot of time we talk about offense and the passing of the ball, but defense is a part of it. You can score the ball, but on the other end, you have to play defense better than we plan. And half the time, if you have a big, and I go back to this with Omek Okafor, if Omek Okafor is out there and he's your center, he's your starting center, and he's your best big outside of Anthony Davis to play defense, then why aren't you playing him? Why aren't you playing him anything else but 13 to 15 minutes a night? Well, against this one, against those KC, he played 13 minutes. He finished with no points, and he had four rebounds. He could have really been a help against a guy like Steven Adams. You get a big body banging around with Steven Adams, and it, it just don't make any sense. Anyway, Andy Davis finished with 25 points, 11 rebounds in this game, a couple of blocks in 40 minutes. He shot 8 of 17 from the field. And uh, he went 9 of 11 from the free throw line. The referees, much credit to him this time around, allowed the Pelicans to get to the free throw line. Uh, in the contest, seven, hitting 17 of 23, they left six points on the free throw line. Ultimately, they lose by five. So remember, I, all, I'm very critical on the free throws. I keep saying over and over again that it's too late in the season to not convert uh, a high percentage of your free throws. And it showed, again, a loss that could have helped because Drew Holiday was absent in this game. He scored 12 points on eight. He had eight assists, five steals in a game. In 34 minutes, he shot only four of 10 from the field, one of four from downtown. He was not nearly aggressive enough in this game, and it showed. 12 points from him, 11 from Rondo, 11 points with nine assists from Ray John Rondo. He had eight rebounds in 34 minutes. He did what he can do. Etwan Moore stepped it up a bit in this game, played better, 15 points, shot six of 12 from the field, three of six from downtown in 31 minutes. That's more his uh, his more his level right there. Nikolai Mirich just fell off the map again. He had four points and four rebounds in 19 minutes, two of nine from the field, zero from four from downtown. Nikolai, or five from downtown, excuse me, he struggled mightily. We could have definitely used Nikolai's 15 points a game. It didn't show up this night. Sheik Diallo played seven minutes, four points in a game, 10 rebounds. He just played seven minutes. Gentry didn't put our energy guy out there to help out. Darius Miller, 27 minutes. He was 5 of 11. Shot. He had 14 points from the field. Big ups to him. Solomon Hill struggled a bit. He finished with three. Ian Clark was a top dog off the bench. He had 16 points in 21 minutes. Shot six of seven. Big ups to Etwan. I mean, Ian Clark, as he continues to do his thing, it's just we needed another person. We needed one of the bigs. If Drew Holiday would have stepped up and scored his 20 points a game, if AD would have reached up there a little bit more, we might have won this one. But once again, 
it's the shoulda, coulda, woulda mentality. It ended up not happening for the Pelicans as they dropped the fourth straight loss. Now, where exactly does that put the Pelicans at? The good news is, I got good news among all of this stuff. The Pelicans did win the season series against the OKC Thunder. If you like that, they beat them two games to one. The only three times they played this year. And they won two to one. So they won the season series against the Thunder. If that's any comfort to Pelicans fans, I'm pretty sure it isn't. <laughs> but anyway, let's look forward. We're looking at the Western Conference playoff race as she stands right now. And the Pelicans are in the eighth position, 43 and 34 right now. And they are one full game ahead of the Denver Nuggets who have won two in a row. They won last night. They are 42 and 35. They are one full game uh, uh, ahead of those Nuggets. So if the Pelicans can't get it done against Memphis, and I'll segue that into the Memphis uh, game right now, which is the next upcoming game. If they can't get it done against Memphis, we're going to lose. We, we, we're going to be looking kind of, crazy here because and people say well man we'll beat memphis man memphis stinks memphis is, is 21 and 56 they stink they're a bad team well guess what that stinking memphis team that you want to criticize the pelic right now that team is leading the pelicans in the season series they beat the pelicans twice this year they beat them twice they're leading the season series two games to one and they were very decisive where well, one of them they started the season off they beat them 103 to 91 then january the 10th they beat them by three, and then the Pelicans were able to get back at them on January the 20, beating them 111 to 104. The last of the four game uh, matchup uh, for the season against this team, the last five games against them, they're three and two. The last 10, they're three and seven. And um, New Orleans is 10 and 0 against Memphis when they score 110 points or more. The Pelicans have won just three of the last 12 meetings with the Grizzlies, which is showing you that they have a problem with this team, whether they're good or bad. New Orleans snapped the seven game losing streak against Memphis. And uh, of February the 15th of last year with their last win against the division rival coming on um, March the 7th, 2015. Additionally, the win snapped the five-game losing streak at the farm. And with the last win in Memphis is coming in here. So in two games against Memphis early season, the Davis averaged, Andy Davis averaged 27 points, 15 rebounds, a couple of blocks a game. Rajon Rondo averaged 10 and a half points and shot 57% from the field. Drew Holiday scored 14 points a game against that team. And in three games against New Orleans early season, Tyreek Evans has scored 17 points a game, five rebounds, four assists. Marga Gasol's averaged 17 points while shooting 46% from deep, averaging about nine rebounds, six assists, and a blocker game. And Elvin Gentry, of course, is 16 and 20 all time against the Memphis Grizzlies. And Grizzlies interim head coach J.B. Bickerstaff is four and two all time against New Orleans. So Elvin Gentry, of course, we know he's pretty much doesn't have a good record against anybody. You know, but a few handful of teams. That's why he couldn't consistently keep a head coaching job uh, in the league. But the Grizzlies averaging 99 points a game, giving up 105 points a game. They're bad. Uh, New Orleans averaging 111 points a game, giving up 110.9, almost 111. 48% from the field. The Pelicans are shooting 44% for the Grizzlies. The Pelicans average 44 rebounds a game, while the Grizzlies average 41. Pelicans average 26 and a half assists per game. The Grizzlies average 21. The Pelicans average six blocks a game. The Grizzlies average five. The Pelicans average almost eight steals per game. The Grizzlies average seven and a half. And the Grizzlies are on a two game losing streak. The Pelicans are on a four game losing streak. The Grizzlies are three and seven in the last 10 contests. The Pelicans are four and six in the last. Uh, 10 games. So with that said, the Grizzlies did beat Portland on uh, March the 28th. Later on in March, they beat them 108 to 103. And they did beat Minnesota 108 to 93. So why do I say that? I say that because Portland, to me, is a better team than the Pelicans currently. And Minnesota, of course, is a better. People say, well, yeah, that's true because Minnesota wiped the floor with New Orleans this entire season. Portland, although the Pelicans did beat Portland, Portland shot them out the building the other night, a few nights ago. And that's a part of the four game losing streak that they're facing right now. So I say that to say that don't overlook the Grizzlies, even though they're coming in here on Wednesday night. 
Don't overlook the Grizzlies because the Grizzlies are a team that play really well at nights. They don't have it all. But Tyreek Evans is going to get up and play against this team. He, Although I think he's listed as out for this game, and I don't know if he's going to play or not, but the, the, the Grizzlies are a team that play difficult. They're a difficult matchup for the Pelicans for whatever reason. You know, I don't know. But the Pelicans dropped four straight against Houston, against Portland, against Cleveland, and now against OKC. And now they're looking pretty bad right now in the face of all this. So I say all that to say this. With the Pelicans, top scorer for the Grizzlies, uh, Marcus Saw averaging 17 and a half a game. The top rebound is Jermichael Green averaging eight and a half. And Paul Gasol is the top assist man for a game. Andy Davis is the top uh, rebounder and top points per game guy. Rondo averaging eight assists for the team. Now, with all that said, who wins the matchup, Big Q? Well, I'm going to just put it like to New Orleans for feeling pretty desperate in this one, and I think they're going to get the win against the Grizzlies. And it'll give them a two-game uh, beef as they knock off the Grizzlies, and they should be able to take care of Phoenix as well. So. Right now, we're going to stick to the Grizzlies, and I'm going to give them the call. After the last four games, I picked against them pretty accurately. This time around, I say the, the Pelicans get the win over the Grizzlies in a good one. Anyway, that's the show tonight. Thank you for joining us on the Pelican Post Game Report. As always, if you enjoy our podcast and our broadcast, please donate by way of www.patreon.com slash the PRO Media Network. Join all of our social media. Check the links below. Thank you for your time and your support. From myself, the Pelican Post Game Report staff, peace. Forget ESPN or Fox. Get straight sports talk from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. What's up, world? This is DC from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. Have you ever been sitting in front of your computer screen, all in traffic, tired, lacking energy, feeling drained? Did you know there are electromagnetic fields or EMF waves all around you that cause this disease? Get it? This ease? Luckily here at Posh Lifestyle, you can get your EMF protection. They have pendants, the shell dye bricks, cubes, and pyramids. Check out the PoshLifestyle.com. That's life spelled with a Y. P-O-S-H-L-Y-F-E-S-T-Y-L-E.com for all your health needs. So get your mind and body right with a Posh Lifestyle. Clear, clean, great tasting filtered water. We're all thirsty for it. But in the U.S. alone, an estimated 2.5 million plastic bottles are added to the environment each year in search of the perfect drink of water. There has to be a better solution, and there is. Crystal Quest, a leader in the manufacturing of water filtration technology, has been providing clean, drinkable water for 20 years. With a deep commitment to providing the highest quality products and excellent customer service, Crystal Quest has been recognized by such leaders as Consumers Digest, Dr. Oz, and Colin Ingram's The Water Drinking Book. Providing cost-effective, reliable water filtration systems for residential, commercial, and industrial customers worldwide. Offering our customers the cleanest and most environmental-friendly drinking water at a rating of high purity. With Crystal Quest's water filtration technology, you can rest assured that your water will be crystal clear. Contact our network of authorized distributors and join our thousands of satisfied customers. Just log in to theposhlifestyle.com. Once again, that is theposhlifestyle.com. You're listening to the Pelicans Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network for all things Pelicans. In today's world, children are bombarded with negativity on television, online, and at school. Our kids need to have a positive outlook on life and the world around them. I want to share with you a valuable resource you can use to bring positivity into your child's life. It's the new book, 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image. From author and dad, G.J. Barabino. This is a simple guide loaded with wonderful and inspirational affirmations designed to uplift young people's spirits. This positive and powerful children affirmational is chock full and loaded with wonderful inspirational sayings that will lift your child's self-image to whole new levels through the awesome power of spoken word. 
101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image from author and dad, G.J. Barabino. Available on Amazon. Order a copy for yourself, your child's teachers, or anyone you know with children. 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image. Order your copy today. What is big? Big is taking flight. Big is sending back that weak sauce. Big is ball handling that sets the hardwood on fire. New Orleans Pelicans, do it big.